Hi, I'm Leslie Thompson for the Plastic Surgery Channel. I'm at the 2009 annual meeting of the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, and I am joined today by Dr. Kia Movasagi, who is a plastic surgeon board certified in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Dr. Movasagi has more than seven years' experience, and he's also an assistant clinical professor at the Oregon Health Sciences University, a uh, Harvard graduate, Harvard Medical School. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, Dr. Movasagi, I know obviously you do all kinds of plastic surgery, but you had mentioned to me earlier that that breast augmentation, breast enhancement is one of your areas of specialization. Can you talk a little bit about um, some new trends perhaps that you've seen in terms of uh, techniques that are being developed or, or devices being developed for this? Sure. Um, as you mentioned, I do a great deal of uh, breast surgery in my practice and it's a great, uh, has a great importance uh, in my uh, specialty. Uh, in the area of breast surgery, in terms of reconstruction as well as augmentation, there have been a lot of technological advances in recent past. One of the most important advances being the introduction of the gel implants. As many of your audience may know, there was a lot of controversy over the silicone implants in the 90s, and they were greatly studied. These implants were greatly studied, and over the past seven to 10 years, uh, thousands of uh, patients were entered into a study in a multi-center uh, uh, status and uh, the implants uh, safety were once again approved. And as of uh, 2006, we had the privilege of having these uh, implants brought back into the market. But obviously these are the more advanced uh, version of the silicone implants. The old silicone implant was the uh, liquid silicone. And the new version of the implants are what's called the cohesive gel implants. And that's been the greatest advantage uh, in the field of breast reconstruction and breast augmentation. Now, with the uh, use of the breast implants, we have two applications. One is for women who have had the diagnosis of breast cancer and unfortunately had to have either mastectomy or partial mastectomy. And the second category of patients are the patients who either have deficiency of breast volume or asymmetry. And uh, the the introduction of the gel implant has made it a lot uh, easier for the surgeons to achieve a much more cosmetic uh, and aesthetically appealing result for the patients. In my practice, I use, uh, there are different, uh, obviously, companies out there. In my practice, I use uh, Mentor primarily okay. for my, most of my patients. Here's an example of a saline implant. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the saline implants, it comes in a deflated shell. Has, the shell itself is silicone, but it's deflated and has a port where in the operating room, the surgeon connects the tube and fills the shell with saline. Okay. The new version of the implant, which is the gel implant, these are pre-filled implants. And this is essentially what's called the memory gel implants. Okay. And the advantage of these implants is, number one, it feels much more natural. Number two, it looks more natural. And number three, especially for breast reconstruction patient where there is deficiency of skin or fat covering the implants, these gel implants are of great advantage. Now there is, in the, the good news is in the horizon, we have the future of the, the, the new, the, sort of the future version of these implants coming out, which is the shape stable implants. And it's essentially a tear shaped implant and it has other advantages. Unfortunately, to this day, they're still under investigation and FDA has not approved them. But we have the uh, luxury of using the gel implants today for most of my patients. In my practice, uh, I use about 98% gel implants and 2% saline implants. And if you ask who are the patients selecting saline, most of them are the patients who are younger than 22. That's one of the FDA restrictions for the gel implants. You have to be 22 or older. Interesting. So, um, in terms of the, the difference between saline and the silicone gel that's currently in use, um, from a safety perspective, you just said that the silicone gel implants have, have undergone a, a large-scale review again, but just a comparison between the two, why do you choose to use the silicone for the majority of your patients? Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, from a patient perspective is the, uh, the outcome. That's, that matters the most. From a physician's uh, perspective, who is also a scientist, and we, I like to analyze the data. And the data on the gel implant is very con convincing. When the data was presented to the FDA three years ago, 
it was shown, demonstrated that the gel implants actually are a much safer product than the saline counterpart. Mm -hmm. From the capsule contracture rate, which is scar tissue formation on the implants, to rupture rate, to infection rate, to reoperation rate, from all those criteria, the gel implants that we're using today are much safer and better product. And cosmetically, there's no way I can get the same results with the saline implants that I can now get with gel implants. And I'm very excited to see the next generation of the implant, which are the shape stable implants, mm -hmm. to come into the market so we can even offer the patients more flexibility and hopefully achieve a better result. Interesting. Well, that's something to look forward to. Well, thank Absolutely. you so much for your time today, well, thank Doctor. thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Leslie Thompson for the Plastic Surgery Channel.